Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Smite Pro League. Eight games today to bring you of some of the best Smite players around the world, well, at least in Europe and North America. My name is Hindyman, alongside me today is Adanis, and we're going to have a fantastic start of the day for you. We're going to have a, a very strong start. We're going to be going forward with Justice taking on Titan. And some roster switch-ups that not everyone might have heard on uh, heard about going on there. Afterwards, it's going to be Paradigm taking on Les Myrmidons, Elevate versus AFK Gaming. And we're going to be closing out this Thursday with Team Solo Mid versus COG. Some really good records for most of these teams and a couple of teams struggling to actually find wins. This is the sort of point of the season right now where you need to start establishing a record if you want to try and get to ladder at least attempt to qualify. And then you've, on the other end of the spectrum, you've also got to deal with not getting relegated and looking at the relegation zone. It might be a little bit too there, early there's, to talk it's about. Only, it's only week three. There's 10 full weeks. I, I will say, though, with the double headers now, exactly. we are starting to see some distinguished uh, teams in the brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, most notably, I was talking about enemy um, yesterday, I was like, this team, you know, they're sitting at the top, but they probably won't remain there, actually coming out with a very strong victory over Denial. So we could see some changing of the guard in, in the top four in America. We least. could do. But over in EU today, we're going to start things off with Titan versus Justice. Titan are currently sat at 5-1, and one, only dropping that one game against Fnatic so far. And Titan, well, we don't often say too much about them because they're just consistent. They're And it's they're consistently at the top as well. Mm -hmm. They're not like a middle-of-the-road team where it's like, are they going to falter or or could they push themselves to be a top team? They're already a top team, and they're just so – they're not – necessarily quiet but it's just nothing ever really changes with them they just keep trudging along beating top teams beating medium teams beating lower seated teams and going to lands like I, it, only, it's, it's really hard to describe them the only time we've actually really seen any sort of changes between these two teams as well is when we saw ataraxia and comfrey switching lanes but that seems to be working out for them as that, well now that by far has been the smoothest lane swap i've ever seen comfrey was actually I, I believe he had the second or third highest kda yeah i believe the fifth highest kda in all of europe Last split and his first split as a hunter. Just not a bad situation. Smooth as butter. But their opposition today is Justice or Just Us, as they like to be called. Currently sat at one and five so far. Their only win was against Dignitas. They did lose to Consp London Conspiracy and Paradigm as well. And this roster, well, it's ever changing because today we're not going to be seeing Sausage. No, uh, word around the street is that Sausage is, has been moved to a substitute, and they're trying a variety of players going forward today. It's going to be Mr. Crunchy, I believe, playing solo for them. That's right. Formerly Team Arcadia, which is this basically is this. This roster. Well, Six Sigma, who played in the Challenger Cup, changed the name to Team Arcadia. And the lineup was Fexus, Vote NBK, Zephyr, who was formerly known as Bobasora, and of course, Mr. Crunchy. They were four of the five members, and now they're all going to be starting off for justice. Funny thing about that team, though, they did nearly beat Myrmidons. It was a 3 2 game that saw them not be able to get into the Pro League. But now they're all pretty much playing in the Pro League. Yeah, four of these members. Failed to make it to relegations, but managed through their individual skills to make it back into this pro league. Starting off with the picks and bans, Justice going to be banning out Yamir, no surprise there. And Al Kwong taken away from Titan. They're not first pick. They're not first pick at all. Al Kwong at the moment will be taken away by Titan. Not a big surprise from them. Their most banned god this season, though, has been Yamir. Last time this team faced off against Justice, though, from Titan, they did win 2-0. Um, and that game was back when the Awelix was rather big for Titan. But also Kanye had, had a very big set on Ares, going real huge, actually almost solo soloing out most of, of Justice themselves. This time they're not going to be dealing with that Kanye life Ares. Ares banned out. Titan taking out Sirket. The power of Blink Sirket in the fall split is just something you can't deal with right now. Yeah, it's going to be taken away. Giannis obviously going to be locked in. One of the top contentious picks. If it's not banned, it is picked normally within the first three picks, at least this split so far. People realizing his mobility and his control is very strong. The global presence is is just too much to, to be scared of, right? Even if you have a high-pressure jungler, Giannis is going to be able to get to that lane and counter-initiate very quickly. And if you do have a high-pressure jungler, then Giannis is going to be able to bring your team on that. And that's where we see a lot of these strong invades come from, is teams who like to draft Giannis and push the issue early on. Well, Titan have picked up that Bologna and Sylvanas. Bologna has been picked three times by Titan so far this split. We've seen Repicast pick it up twice, and once for Ataraxia in the solo lane as well. So it is a flex pick to Titan. And now with that Sylvanas being locked in, well, that's definitely going to go over to Kanye. He picked it twice so far this season. The other times he's picked odds, it's generally been Ares. Yeah, uh, but Ares banned out. Not going to be able to grab that. Medusa locked in for Justice. That's going to be going to vote NBK in the duo, duo lane. 
it's a smart choice to always draft a hunter that has very strong wave clear against a Sylvanas. Sylvanas push is so high, you can't allow Sylvanas to both combine against it and, and be stuck with someone who can't outpush him. Completely agree. And it also means that in the Hunter role too, over on Titan, they don't necessarily have to get someone with amazing wave clear. Neath is available, however, and Repi, sorry, Comfrey has picked it up twice so far this season. It's been a good go-to composition we've seen of this Sylvanas Neath double root composition. As well as double root, Neath brings a lot of global presence. And that's what Titan likes to do. If they draft Neath, they use the ult offensively. Yep. Every time it's on cooldown. That's one thing that I think Titan does very well is utilize Neath's ultimate. It's not going to be Neath, at least in this spot, though. They're going to draft the Isis. That's going to be going to Pretty Prime. A lot of pri high pressure in that mid lane. Yeah, he's played it a couple of times this season as well, so he'd be quite comfortable on that one. It's been one of his go-tos alongside Agony as well. We're going to enter the counterbomb phase now, and this is where it gets interesting based off the pick so far. Titan will be the first up, and they'll probably be looking to take away either the support player here or they'll be looking at the solo. Taking away an Athena or a Gab, whichever one you don't want to have to face, I think is a is a good look. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to take away the Athena. Geb is up. That's going to be likely going to Justice and Support. But we have seen Europe experiment. We, we've seen the rise of Bacchus a little bit in, in both North America and Europe as well. Maybe not something they want to focus on, though. Well, where was he queuing go for that, though? I'm not sure exactly where his god pull will lend him to this game. There is the ability to go for the Odin. Very good is Odin against Sylvanas. Very good against Isis as well. But will he have it available in his god pull? Will it be what the composition is really looking for is the question. Neath banned out. Good target ban by Justice there. Recognizing Comfrey will probably go for that one if it is left available. Titan, they're looking for their fourth pick. Hunter and either Solo or or, or Jungle still open, but it is going to be the Rom. Rom has been... Rom's always been in the meta, always been strong, but I think Snoopy has shown the true potential of Rom. If you can hit those snipes, it can devastate an enemy team. Really can. The big thing about the snipes as well is that as they get smaller in radius, if you can land those ones, the ones at the end, they do so much more damage, it can really annihilate a team. There's also really good gold fury control with that. Precisely. Or, or steel potential. Well, you could be stuck there in your lane, your team could die, and you could still defend the gold fury by just going up into the air. It could force the team away at least to reset for a moment. They can buy them a minute. Gap, though, picked up by Justice. Not a surprise there. We were talking about it. And Hades for the solo laner, which will be Mr. Crunchy today. And now, where will we see Ataraxia go? We've seen some Sol Wukong out of him um, and Hades for the most part and a little bit of it Bologna. Could, it so this could be a jungler here it, still. It could still be the Bologna, but Bologna versus Hades, that's... that's a rough matchup and a half, and I think Titan's going to try and stay, stray away from it. Yeah, they're going to be putting that raw on the soul, and it will be Bologna in the jungle. The raw, while he's not going to be able to outpush Hades, he has one ability that could clear the wave instantly after he, he gets a couple levels into it. Very safe solo laner. However, he will likely need a very early beads against the Hades Thor gang. See, that Taraxia, though, on a god that isn't an assassin or a warrior is going to be very strange to me. We've not seen him on too many mages so far. Other he, than Hades, he, he plays a lot of safe gods in the solo does. lane. This is a sustained god, though, and it's not something we've really seen too much out of him before. But in that matchup, it's going to be pretty much a farm off for the most part. Neither of them should really have kill potential maybe a slight chance for Hades if he does catch him in the ultimate the, the kill potential will be coming off of Thor ganks more than anything Ataraxi is gonna have to be very wary of that but I I, I feel like he's just gonna be sitting under tower and, and safely farming there's really no reason for him to try and out push a Hades or look for a kill potential on Hades it's it's very unlikely to happen unless Repikos plans on rotating over and, and baiting out that Hades dash and, and looking for a gank well Justice at the start of this game went down and warded both sides of those gold furies so of the mid harpies right? not gold furies uh, either side of the mid harpies just to give them total control of vision of the jungle rotations and to catch any early invasions clearly though Titan not interested in invading they're going to start things off nice and safe and wave clear between Hades and Thor and Ra and Bologna. Pretty much even, I'd say. Maybe a slight advantage for Hades Thor. Early on, it, it's it's likely to be Hades Thor. I mean, Hades can full clear a wave. Uh, at, at level two, Ra is going to take a little bit more time. Both teams, though, very defensive positioning. They didn't really poke out too much. They dropped their wards, Justice did at least, and then they, they backed off since then. Now I've noticed as well, the start of the season we saw the Paradigm start coming out, the AFK start as well. But what that was doing was it was leaving this red buff untaken at the beginning of the game, and it left the enemy team with the potential to try and invade early and on. And that happened a lot too. We've it seen did. it a lot. And now teams have recognized that and have started to default back to what we saw last split, where the mage begins with the Hunter and the support to actually bring down that red buff first of all. And it basically just rinse repeats the last season. It does mean, though, that both Harpies stay up. 
one thing that that allows is it, it makes sure your jungle doesn't get invaded. Well, it's it's a slight oh, decrease. Big, fast blink from Kanye. It's a great pull. But Vote MBK still level one. Going to try and turn damage. He shouldn't have turned that. I think he could have got out if he tried not to turn and deal Q damage. Q die too here. Is there a route available? Kanye no. life's looking for it. The cooldown though. Just a tad too high. That and was that, a really fast first blood. That was a very fast Very first aggressive blood. from Kanye, though, just to realize that they got level two ever so slightly quicker because of the push shift from the team. Went straight for the kill with the blink. Really good play and really good pickup. We can see the invade coming out from Titan. They have the pressure in the mid lane with that Isis Bologna. And it, just the back hard piece stolen out. But that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. If that red had been left up, it would that would have been out. gone. Yeah, because the, the push from Sylvanas would have been there, especially after the kill onto Vote MBK as well. Would have just put them in an awkward position. This will also delay, though, with those back copies being taken. Justice is mid and jungler from actually trying to get themselves to that level five. Around what we normally like to see at about 2 minutes 15 to 2 minutes 20. A little bit of poke coming out on this solo lane here. And this is what I expect to see yeah. early on. Ataraxia going to be losing a couple minions uh, to tower. Going to be losing a little bit of gold, but it's not going to be significant. And by the time he hits level 6 or 7, he should be full clearing the wave. Not surprised pretty, to see. Pretty uh, effective. Not surprised to see a new player onto the into the pro league, Mr. Crunchy, picking someone very safe in that solo lane too. Hades, he's one of those go-tos. He's like a Chak. He's the magical version of Chak to an extent. Basically. Of playing safe in that lane and not going to give anything up or be a threat of dying too easily. Kanye Life continuing to push up on this duel lane. He's already level 4. Boat MBK oh, very far behind. That's a very wave. nice pull here. I don't think Hewan's going to die, but he's going to get poked out for sure. Really poked down as well. Those Wisps will do damage. Notice how Comfrey actually activated his Astral Penetration Arrows just for the extra damage more than anything else on top of that. It does give it a little bit more damage to it, and it really penetrated onto Geb, forcing him back to base. Crunchy's level 5 here. They're going to try and bait out his dash, but it doesn't look like he's having any of it. No, he recognizes that Repikos could be in the jungle, and he's saving that dash. Smart play from him from a, a new solo laner to the scene, to and, the SPL at least. And right now as well, Ataraxia isn't starting to get himself in a prime position to be able to set up for the snipe as well. His wave clear should be pretty strong right now. I think Ataraxia is going to try and bait himself. You see how Mr. Crunchy just walked to the left there slightly? He's actually trying to cover the angle to see if Repi is there. You see how he's walking over there? I think he knows. He he's has looking, to know. But he's not 100% certain. That's the issue. And Reppy's been doing this a lot this season of telegraphing coming for this solo lane. I think he's wasting his time, though, right now. He's not going to get anything out of this. He's going to have to come into lane in a minute and just soak experience. Otherwise, he's going to lose a lot of time. I mean, at the very least, two waves in a row, Crunchy has not dashed. I mean, he's not hes not taking the bait. Very patient from Crunchy, though, for that. And Prime trying to make something happen on the other side of the map at the they're, same they're time. They're trying to bait a rotation over on the left side. Well, at the moment, we've got Zephyr in the jungle on this Thor, but we've not seen him take to the sky just yet. Not had the opportunity, I feel, to do anything, especially with the pressure that's been going on. Ra's been very safe. I mean, he could look for duo lane here, honestly. That should be what he's looking for, especially with Giannis and how hard they're pushing. Mid camp's about to spawn here, and and something to note is Zephyr. Zephyr's picked up creeping curse as an active on a Thor, uh, and I active. I don't think I've ever seen a Thor jungle pick up. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Thor pick so up. So why would he be looking for the? Why do you reckon the creeping curse would be good for him? Going I'm, to the weakening for Sylvanas and maybe Isis. Or? I'm assuming that that's what they need. They 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 want an Isis or they want an Isis. They want a weakening on their team, but they don't want to have to put it onto Hades. They want to give Hades either beads or blink and shield of the underworld. And really, you don't need a second active on Thor. He has enough mobility that as long as he has beads, he should be relatively safe. The second active is just going to allow him to dive more if he elects to go something defensive like Aegis. Do you feel, though, that we, we should be seeing a Weakening Curse as well coming out from Q in on this Geb? Because, you know, generally the support is the only one who need the blink for the most part. Or will he be looking for beads to expect or something like that? Beads is a high possibility. It's something that we've started to see coming out of a lot of supports. And there is pretty heavy CC and lockdown. I mean, an Isis Spirit Ball could completely shut him down, as well as Repikos if he elects to just alt onto him. But I don't think there's enough CC to warrant Beads. I think this is just something that Zephyr wants to try and get rolling early. I don't. Well, it may turn into a weakening. I think he just wants it for the slow early on to lock down these targets. Well, I don't think Titan will be upset with the position they're in so far. Picking up that first blood, and against a team that, to be honest, with the global rotations available from Thor and Yarnus, they should be being much more passive and trying to be, you know, playing very scared. They've got themselves in a good spot. I don't feel Justice has really made anything happen just yet with these ultimates. I feel like Justice is playing scared. I mean, we haven't seen Zephyr over to this duel lane once all game, and he's he's up against a Raw. Now the Raw has Breastplate of Valor on, so... Ataraxia is not even worried about the Hades. He's solely 
worried about Zephyr Ganks. He's worried about that Thor coming to his lane, and now with that Breastplate of Valor, as long as he doesn't get poked out by Hades, it's going to be very hard to lock him down. I almost feel like Zephyr, while he hasn't missed his window, his window has definitely shrunk on trying to get some early kills on Ra. And that's the thing with Breastplate of Valor as well. We saw it a lot previously when we saw mages in that solo lane, because when you get a physical um, in the jungle, you generally want to try and pick it up. Normally, you want to get it even more so if you're against a, another physical in the lane. But like you said, he's not scared of this Hades, so able to go into it, get that cooldown and the extra mark. Some pressure coming out from Titan. They found the first blood, and they're putting they're putting a lot of pressure, but they haven't been able to find anything. Yeah. And Repikas continuing to try and bait. They're trying to catch rotations more than anything in the jungle. They're not Justice is not anything. falling for it, though. They're not. They're just saying, playing very safe and just continuing to farm. My issue is, what do you feel about like mid late game? I feel like you know Titan has the whole team fight advantage in terms of like big you know whole team fight presence. Or do you feel that's kind of even? It's going to be pretty even mid-game, especially if the Hades. I think the Hades is going to create a bigger impact in these mid-game team fights, especially if you can lock down these targets who don't have any movement abilities. I mean, Isis, Kanye Life, Ataraxia, they're not really going to be able to get out of the alt without well, with, without blink. In the solo lane as well beads. with these two gods, you generally end up seeing them both end up staying there for extended periods of time yes. just because of the push power they both have. They don't want to miss a wave because if they do, the enemy will be able to really push down that tower, especially someone like Ra with the heal onto the minions. Confrey continuing to farm up. BodeMK has been under his tower uh, all game. You can, you can see it reflected, right? He's 300 gold behind. Confi is one of these that has been going for, as they call it on the internet, the meme build. I don't want to call it that really, no, but I did say I'd never say, it once. say that again. I said I'd say it once. No, and that was it. don't never say, say it again. again. That's what the, that's what the owner wants to call it. I mean, we called it the unicorn build when Crap made that one. Yeah, but the meme build? Come on. I Here's know. a gank, though, coming on Q, and Q is going to be pulled here. He will go into his ult. He's going to stun out a couple here. A huge oh. rotation, though. Fexes finds the snipe. Repikas is going deep, and he's already poked out. He does find Q, and but with Zephyr landing down, Kanye Life going to return that double kill coming out for Fexes. Well, a Fexes nice fight for Justice. Yes. Fexes' rotation was fantastic. He managed to find the snipe onto Prime and follow it over to Unstable Vortex, then also in the jungle. That pick up the other oh. one. And Zephyr going to find that pick up onto Repikas. Not a good fight for Titan. Justice, well, maybe Maybe this was their game plan, Adonis. They weren't actually looking to do the engagement. They were going to counter gank the moment Titan went aggressive. And, and we did talk about that, right? They, they have the mobility to where when one of their lanes does get engaged mm -hmm. on, their entire team can be right there. And Zephyr, he was there as well, right? He's been hanging around with Fexes, so they're rotating or they counter rotated as a unit. And also that creeping curse, Big play there. He actually slows down Repikas, allowing himself to set up the double tap better because Repikas, he can't juke it out as easy. Doesn't need the stun to set it up. Now, we did mention at the start of this that most of the members of Justice in this game were formerly on a team called Team Arcadio, who were formerly known as Six Sigma, who played together through the Challenger Cup for a long time. So these guys, they've been around together. The only new player to their roster, technically, for this one is q in the support. So they're going to know each other's game plan and style. And to be honest, it's starting to show already in this game. Yeah, but the inexperience of their team showing even harder there. Titan just sneaks a Gold Fury. Justice have no vision on it at all. Did not expect it. No one even showing up in lanes. Zephyr's going to be walking over there and realizing his mistake very quickly. If you're checking the gold and experience right now, we should be able to see it's pretty much even, though. That gold just evened things up a little bit. Titan had dropped a little bit to Justice, but gold for your early game, not as valuable as it used to be, as it does scale with time in terms of gold. 500 gold behind, not a big deficit. It's, it, it's actually almost no deficit. It, it's a couple wards, a couple potions, maybe a tier one active on one player. 500 gold by all means is dead even. And looking at the experience, it's just as close. Justice right now are holding on, but like you said, coming into the late game, I, I think I'm going to give the edge to Titan, especially the thing with Titan's team comp, the thing with healers in general is when they're in the lead, that's when they're the strongest. And Yeah, but there's three healers as well, right? There's going to be Ra, there's going to be Isis, and there's going to be Sylvanas as well. So I can understand why they've gone for that second weakening curse on in the jungle for Zephyr there on that Thor. The game so far, though, Justice haven't looked bad. They do have a small lead in terms of kills. Golden Space, as we saw, a little bit different. Both the Hunters, though, going for those solely to build. We did see the Transcendent start from Vote MBK, and he has got that stack now, so his damage will be a lot higher. Rappy guys, putting some pressure onto this right lane. Ataraxia, uh, he's now at the point where he can play pretty aggressively, and we see Titan actually grouping up. 
The speed buff is picked up by Zephyr. Repika is going to come around the corner and find that. Fex says, though, might be caught out. No, no, Fex says is caught out. He's Zephyr that's caught out. He tried to hammer over the wall, but wasn't able to find a good knock up through the wall from Chewin, though. And that through space and time will save his teammates. Rotation in from Crunchy to zone them away. And Justice come out unscathed. A really good defensive play from them after somebody getting picked. I mean, that was just unfortunate for Repika. He missed the bludgeon that would have likely finished off Zephyr. And then a perfectly positioned, I mean, Beyond perfectly positioned ult coming up from Fex says, yeah. all that Zephyr had to do was hold himself next to that wall. He knew the ult was going to come through, and you saw the second that portal was made, he teleported straight to the tower and was allowed to escape that gank. Well, they're trying to pressure once again in the solo lane with three men this time, but Crunchy doing a good job of holding on to his... Thor, to Thor has all, and he's rotating into this. Crunchy's trying to fight this. No, he real, the way Crunchy went aggressive, that's the first time we've seen him actually use that to go go into a minion wave. He we kind of telegraphed it a little bit too early, I feel, if they were really going to go aggressive there. Yeah, and you can already see that. All of Titan realized that backs off Zephyr. Going to be rotating back to mid lane. I the really ward like, battle does continue. Honestly, I really like Justice's game plan here. It feels like, let's try and frustrate Titan into making mistakes. Let them go aggressive. Let's counter gank it if possible. We can escape. We've got the mobility. The rotations have been good so far from the team as well. And the support from each other has been very strong. Will this work out as the game goes on, though? Or will Titan start to find those little weaknesses when they can find picks? I mean, they showed it already with that Gold Fury. And that's, but that's, that's experience as an SPL team, right? It's not team fighting. Team fighting is something that if you've been together for quite some time, which the four members of this team outside of QN have been, they're going to be able to team fight evenly with Titan, right? Mm -hmm. The objectives, though, they're going to have to work on the control. Snipe coming through, voting BK, and Fexa is going to try and combine to pick up Kanye Life here. Wrath of Terra going to knock multiple players oh. up. Zephyr's going to land down. Kanye Life, he's going to pull him in place, but that's going to be a free kill. Snipes coming out as well, though, from Comfrey. A little bit out of range to really land those shots. Doesn't connect with any of them, I feel, definitely. Shield blocked one of those as well. So a nice pickup onto Kanye Life by Justice there. They committed nicely onto it. Find the kill. Get themselves out. No casualties of Wolf. Vex is going to be running into Repikas here. Going to be slowed out a little bit. A portal should order. get him out here safely. Yeah. Takes a, a, a lot of poke. And I believe he just came back to lane as well. Yeah, well, already he did, forced to back. He did rotate as well over to that duo lane with that ultimate, so did make it worthwhile for himself to pick it up. Going to be going for that Book of Toth build next after finishing the Chronos pendant is Fexas. Meanwhile, in the solo lane, we can see this Hades by Mr. Crunchy has finished Warlock Slash, nearly fully stacked already, which is a good standard to have, honestly. 79 stacks already. Oh, wow. It's going to be very tanky. Yeah, he had that early. He rushed that very quickly. He wasn't too worried about the ganks coming through. Didn't go the boots. He had the Thor on his team, which means even if Repikas came there, and, and, and he had the Giannis all right? Even if he was ganked, he had the team pressure. He had the global mobility on his team to bail him out. And that's what he's doing as well. If you notice know when he's farming the minion, maybe he's using the silence and then ending the minion right. to his three Re and saving the depths from below for safety. We even depths saw that. Repika sat in the jungle yep. for two entire waves. And it's just wise from Crunchy to realize that is his only escape, really, if he does get ganked, other than a silence to buy him a second. Medusa. I almost thought Medusa was going to get caught out there if Pretty Prime had rotated under. There was no ward coverage for Justice in that spot. Instead, though, it's going to be Q and a nice wall from Zephyr to stop Titan's aggression. Look at the Harpies are still down, though, but I believe it's Titan that know when they're going to spawn next. Zephyr, well, Zephyr and Q and will have the timer once they do spawn. Flashing at the moment, and they are up. And we may see a bit of contestation over these. Z Zephyr wants to take them, but he's not exactly well, sure Fexus where Titan is. is. back in right now as well is the issue. But it looks like Titan are going to give those ones up and don't realize it was being done until too late. I'm assuming they didn't have, have the ward timer on there. Kanye Life and Zephyr going to continue their warding battle. And this nice spot effort. has been so contested all game. We've seen so many sentries picked up just there. You can already see nine wards for Kanye Life, six for Fexes, five for Pretty Prime, and, and four coming out from Yannick or, or Thor. Yeah, both both teams really warding heavily. And I, I can see that Justice really want to get dominance of the map so they can keep an eye on these rotations coming in, be able to counter gank effectively if possible. That's why you can see so many of these. Yannis, like I said, Fex has seven, like you said, so many wards placed down by him in the mid lane compared to like Prime, who's two behind. Gold Fury has respawned. Titan, they were able to sneak it last time. I, it's unlikely that Justice is going to allow that to happen again. You can already see they have two very aggressive wards, one one to the top of the gold fury and also one to the upper left. And Repika is going to be standing right on it.
The big concern for this game is so far it feels very, not necessarily slow paced, but methodically tactical from both these two teams. If though Titan do get to this mid late game with this composition, and we said about the healing they, they have on their side, they could really just end a game very quickly if they manage to get a wipe on the enemy team. If just they, from if, the sustained yes. push. If they win a fight without losing too many members, they're going to be able to heal up and, and keep the pressure right. on. Zephyr going to get pulled. Beads forced very quickly. He's going to eat that spirit ball and get very low. Fex says, though. Good return damage. Fe Zephyr very wise, though, not to use his hammer to jump away. He just beads and realize he could walk out of that one. That was a shell call. three popped as well from Kanye Life. That's a 90 second cooldown. Fex says though, being aggressed on once more by Rep. He didn't manage to find that Eagles. There's Rep's ult as well. So that ult is going to be on cooldown for the time being. Doesn't matter. But the thing is, it is a baloner. That ult isn't that long. It's not that long of a cooldown, but the big thing coming out from that is that both Shell and Eagle's Rally were burned on the side of Titan, which makes them less inclined to start the Gold Fury. And if Justice doesn't want to force it, which it's very clear they don't, they're playing this defensive counter-engage team. This comp. is what Titans specialize at. Going aggressive in the mid lane. Start great snipe combination from Prime and Ataraxia together with the ultimate coming in from Kanye to pick up the kill. They pressure this so often around this same time every single game, Kevin. They just go in and try to force a tier one in mid. Crunchy being very aggressive. He actually locks four in place, but there's no follow oh, holding. That's the that snipe comes through. There's on table Vortex, but not enough. The healing coming out from Titan is too strong. They're able to heal up almost all the poke. Confer, he's looking for the light. snipe and he's gonna secure it. Titan, walk away with two kills for that. And there's the sustain coming out now. They're thinking about going for more. They could look to the Gold Fury as well, but maybe they want to try and get the tier two, especially with three members still being dead. The ultimate defense from the Hades there was good, but Cataclysm from Q to buy a second. Weakening Curse used too. He's taking He's a lot of down. poke. Kanye's still tanking this up on, on the backside though. Kewin will get out. No, he will not. The Eagles rally will secure it. Vote MBK looking for Reppy. Reppy should fall. Unless his team's able to help him, and it looks like Zephyr. He's going to wow. cancel out the Berserker's Barrage throw out a weakening curse and take to the sky. There's a lot of players low. Shell is popped though. Is he going to land before it ends? No, he's going straight for Repigas. One more hit, but great stun, great Teamwork. silence. Zephyr falls and Titan. They just blew this game wide open. And this is what the sustain is. Look at this. They're all healing back up. We're just going to see Repi return to base. He was low on mana anyway, but four members of the team back to full health pretty much apart from Prime. But one more Wisps. We'll see that happen. They may rotate for the Gold Fury, but this could be biting off more than they want to. They did kill Thor, but Crunchy's back. Q and will be back there too. Medusa's already in the area. Giannis, his ult just came up as well as Mr. Crunchy rotating in. This could be a good team fight, but there's still so much healing. Through space and time got fired as well. And they're going to get it. Justice do get the Gold Fury from that engagement, but maybe Crunchy will be a casualty. That's yes, fine. the Circle of Protection will bring him down. They're going to take that any day of the week. One kill for the Gold Fury. That should have evened up the graphs a little bit. And Titan, they had a huge wing, almost 3,000 in the lead. Justice with that steal, though. Lowered it back down to 1,500. But every time I've seen Titan just lately, it's like we get to about 14 minutes in and we see this big rotation for them to all come mid. Four members turn up and they just try and siege the tier one tower and they get it again this game. And it put the pressure onto Justice who answered back in fairness by, in my, in my opinion, I feel it's more of a misplay from Titan not to recognize the reinitiation was mm -hmm. available. And, and taking a look too at, at that execution in mid lane is, it, it was perfect. I mean, what happened is, Pretty Prime throws out his Spirit Ball, immediately throws out his ult. Now he knew that the damage wouldn't stack up, but what happened is we saw Kanye Life blink in Wrath of Terra, and conjunction Ataraxia sniped, sniped at the exact same time finding two. Fully charged Prime's ultimate, he detonates it, they find one kill, the other player's low, and they just pile in after that. And that's the benefit of a Sylvanas ultimate. Anything with a knockup, if you do get hit by the initial knockup, even beads in it, you're not gonna get out of the knockup. So you do set yourself up for the snipe opportunity, and that's trust between teammates more than anything. Ataraxia now finds himself double 06 in that solo lane and takes down that tier one as the rest of Titans start to siege down the left hand lane. And this is the power of their team comp. They have the healing, but Ataraxia is not with them right now. And Justice, they're just trying to defend four versus four. Fex says has rotated over. Q and going very aggressive though, taking a ton of poke. Yeah, he's, trying to he's get already under half. For his team, he's already he's almost taking half. a lot of pokes. So Cacklinger comes out only really hitting one circle of protection. Was used defensively though, as he expected the reinitiation. Q and going to be forced back to the back lines very low and no ultimate available. He's going to be hit for shields and knock up some more than anything. Hey, he's on the way. Miscommunication from Justice clearly. I mean, Q and rolls in, the rest of the team, they're sitting at the back of the tower here. And now we have Titan. They're going to blink in. Kanye Life misses Crunchy the pool. Crunchy, Crunchy. gets three busy on the backside as well. Petrified didn't really do much as we see Zephyr takes to the sky. Fexes does secure Ataraxia. Good dunk from Zephyr to pick up Prime. And now 
Mr. Sorry, not Mr. Goodrick. Comfrey has him to dash away and trade damage back. But those poles are opening up an opportunity for Justice to continue aggression. Comfrey takes to the sky. He's got one more shot, but two players waiting for him. Repicos does manage to take out Vexus. Oh, Comfrey! Oh, Comfrey could turn this. He has a dash available. No, dash down for one more second. He can't oh, take wow. any more damage. Both players are one hit. Zephyr's able to pick up Repicos and Justice. They split, tighten up. They're not able to siege effectively. And Justice win that fight. Comfrey, he's going to back. Not able to find Mr. Crunchy. Now they but should be able to get this tier one tower. They've got a full minion wave coming in and a few extra leads to kill this quickly. Look, always how they grouped up for Crunchy to heal them. Once again, Kieran going to tank this one up and start bringing it down. A good fight for Justice. And it was all really from Crunchy's engagement more than anything else. Yeah, he locks four in place with Pillar of Agony, forcing them to either beads early or take a significant amount of damage. But it looks like Justice wants to siege a tier two. Ataraxia, he just spawned, he's coming up. I don't think they could take this, but they can get some They're damage trying. onto it. I mean, the boys are coming back. Already have. They could be overstaying their welcome though, because they may get chased down even if they do get this. Good call to get it, but can they get out? Not clean. One person for that, maybe worth, maybe? Uh, to be fair, it's not that bad. To be fair, it's worth. It, I mean, sure. considering there's nothing for Titan to do off of having the numbers advantage by taking out Zephyr, that is, I think, a well, worth that's, that's for Justice. Exactly. The best news is Gold Fury is currently down. Fire Giant, well, it's a potential attempt from Titan, but will they realize it's, it? Will it's they way too it? risky at this point. Well, especially with oh. Snipes online as well. Now it's not worth Titan recognizing that all of Justice had backed, or, or a majority of them backed, going to siege, siege down this Tier 2, which, once again, it's still under half from the Siege earlier. And they bought items this time around as well. Good engage from Kanye again. There's Crunchy to try and zone them all in. They're actually stuck in a hard place right now, as is Kanye. Kanye will fall down there to the tower. Vote MBK getting credit for that one. Comfrey takes to the sky, looking for the snipes. Good shield from Q and though to block one shot. The patience from Comfrey. Well, it's not going to be patient enough because he was running out of time anyway and the shield persevered. But Justice able to find a kill and successfully defend their tower. But here's the heals coming out from Titan. They don't want to give up on this even though they are the man down now. Does not look like a 1-5 team at the moment, Justice. They're actually looking very strong this game up against Titan, who we say consistently do well and find themselves at the top. But still Titan on the siege with the sustain cup. Crunchy going in again on the backside. Vote MBK getting aggressed on by Repicast. Forced away by Q as Fexes does secure one. Thanks to the help of Crunchy who finds Prime. Now Comfrey's in trouble too. Oh my, oh my, Justice. Take the kill lead and can start siege in mid. That is a, a huge swing. And right now Crunchy has been coming up big for Justice. I mean, it is Hades. Alts have been on point, continuously locking in three to four players. And we've seen, even though he only just picked up his first couple kills. His ability to turn around against Titan has been phenomenal. And they do have their own healing ability because of it. And right now, Crunchy, he's double stacking and he's almost got him fully stacked. So, I mean, they're going to go for this at the moment. Two on defense. Kanye, no ultimate wreck, no ultimate just yet. Good pull, though, from Kanye to try and bring down Q. And those whisks going to do work, as is the Phoenix. Now we're going to see the attention switch to Crunchy, though. And Kanye is probably going to get caught out of position and picked up here. The ultimate defensively used, but he's not going to hold it for long as the Phoenix falls. And Rappi, well, he's in trouble too now. He's going to be locked in place here. His ult is down. He's going to fall. Going to actually avoid the double tap because of it. Zephyr's going to find the double kill. Pretty prime. Wow. Doing his best to keep them at bay. And Justice right now up 13 to 10 in kills. I mean, they're winning these fights. This counter engage uh, play style that they've developed against Titan has been working. And really Titan, has. Titan has been the aggressors all game. Yeah, they've been the aggressors, but every time Justice has come back into it, Crunchy, in fairness, he was able to play it so safe in the solo lane that he stacked up that Warlock Sash. And by doing that and getting it so tanky, he was near enough 100 stacks at 14 minutes in this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. my big thing so far for Mr. Crunchy is I, I do want to roll back to that team fight in mid at that Tier 2 tower before we saw Justice win it, mm -hmm. was Crunchy ulted three or four players in place Isis ulted in response. Shell ulted also, or, or, or Shell came out from, from Titan as well, and Ataraxia sniped Crunchy. And then he got exploded a full circle protection, he and he lived. Why did he live? Warlock Sash. It's fully stacked. It has a lot of HP on the item if you can actually get it up there. Usually, though, we don't see it fully stacked by as early as it was this game. It's really paid dividends for the Boys of Justice, and now, well, they're the ones with the advantage. They're going to start seizing up the Fire Giant. Look to take tier one first of all. I like the call not to go for Fire Giant. I, I like though. it. Play safe. Mm -hmm. They've Jump. got the lead. Why not? Mi why make a potential mistake and throw it against a team that, like Titan, who are very established and know exactly what's going to be going on? Justice right now have been playing very play well. Titan, be ready. It's going to be a blink from Kanye. Confrey's already in See, the sky. Kanye expected to blink there, but the wall from Zephyr was so good that he just dissuaded the situation. Qin is going to get probably get picked here. The cataclysm comes out through space and time is fired. That does help to Ataraxia as a snipe hits into vote MBK. The petrify in place is good, but the circle protection plus shell is keeping them all alive. As Crunchy's getting very low in that, and he will explode, but he will trade.
trade out to Isis as well. Replica still trying to bring down Vote MPK on the backside. The bludgeon hits, but he's getting weaker. He'll trade himself out. Zephyr finds himself a double kill. Two for three exchange. Justice is favor. Beck says he's going to blink in and actually just barely avoid that. Zephyr going super deep once again, oh, but he's up. tanking the Phoenix. Can't keep this aggression up. And Adoraxia and Kanye Life, the two healers remaining for Titan. And with Justice players a little bit too low, they're going to have to back out of this one. One thing I want to talk about as well, which we've not mentioned yet, Zephyr did pick up Brawler's Beat Stick, which I think is a fantastic item against this composition. We've seen the sustain out of them. They've gone for double and weakling curse. This side of Justice know how to deal with this healing composition that they're up against. And they're really starting to shred Titan back now. Titan, well, to be fair, we were like, Justice were hanging on. That's how we called it at the start of this game. But now it's Titan that are on the defensive. Justice have ha have the full momentum now. You can see them. They're going to be backing, finishing off some big items here. We see Breastplate of Valor coming out for Gev. Not an item we typically see, but clearly the the physical pressure coming out of Repikos has been too much. Because we have seen Repikos dive very mm -hmm. deep, notably going for Vote MBK. Repikos, the past couple of fights, has been diving the back line for Vote MBK. But Qin has successfully been able to defend him. Maybe something that Repikos wants to switch up moving forward in these well, teamfights. Confidence is high by Justice. They started the fire giant there. I don't agree with it because obviously Vote MBK was not there just yet. They do reset it in the end. Zephyr took a bit of poke. That wall was not on point. No, he's not going to be able to They're find Kanye. They're trying to Kanye, though. Well, they find him. They've got the weakening curse off as well, so there's no sustain for him. Raffatella used, but Kanye should fall unless those wisps. Well, they need to start healing, but Zephyr take it to the sky. Goodbye, Tree. I feel like Zephyr probably could have dove into the back line of Titan there. I mean, that kill was secured, and he kind of waited, wasted his ult. Un unless they, Justice really didn't want to have to re-engage with that. They did waste a couple ults, though. Cataclysm and, and Thor's ultimate in that fight, something that they may have needed. Confrey, he's trying That's to get in fire. here, but Crunchy is doing a fantastic job of zoning, and Titan, they, they're giving this up. They're giving this up. For me, Justice has played very, very well this game. One thing I want to point out as well is that tier two that they took on the right hand side. If Zephyr did not get that wall off on Kanye, that could have been a whole different story because Titan were making a big play that we saw in the tier one mid lane earlier. And you even saw Confrey go preemptively expecting his support to go in. Fortunately, he was blocked off. And now Justice, well, they're going to take that middle Phoenix one more time. And where are they going to swing to next? Because there's only Phoenixes remaining. Gold Fury is up, and you can see those pings. Right. That ping, those that pings. Uh, clear that jungle, do Gold Fury. And I like that, right? Their own jungle is up. They they got Fire Giant. They're going to be able to clear out the jungle, get a huge amount of gold back, spend it, and then still have Fire Giant for probably another minute and a half to two minutes to siege another Phoenix. Going to be about 1,000 gold each for this team going back to base minimum on the side of Justice. Now, Titan have lost their middle Phoenix. They're not going to be able to get here to contest this Gold Fury, though. And they're going to be up against a full Fire Giant team. Let's see what they swing back to base and buy. And Titan, well, they're going to just try clear out their jungle and push out their lanes ready for the next siege. Crunchy starting to tank up, picks up that Pestilence. That's going to reduce the healing on Titan by 20%. This is what I love. There's so many teams that draft healing compositions, and all we see from the opponents is like, maybe a Divine Ruin, maybe a Weakening. Justice are saying, there's not going to be the healing for you. They have a Pestilence, they have a Brawler's Beat Stick. They have, they have two, have two pestilences, pestilences, two Brawler's Beat Sticks, and two Weakening Curses. They are shutting down any healing potential let's be that honest, Titan has. What is, the, what is the strength of this composition Titan have drafted? Sustain. And if you don't have the sustain in the engagements, well, they're going to be over very quickly if they can get to your back line. Keep an eye on Mr. Crunchy because these ultimates that he's been getting off this game have been very, very important to his team. Fexes, though, has been hiding secretly in the wind with these amazing ultimates of his. Find himself at 5, 2, and 10. He's been on point in this game. You can see that in his player damage. And it's not only that. Fexes has also been, uh, you know, sitting around the side. Confrey actually might be caught out here. Actually, they're investing a lot into him. Great beats by Confrey. Going to keep him alive for at least one second. Snipes down to secure it. Confrey's up in the sky. Can Confrey get the snipes though because of the backside Zephyr's going to take to the sky in response. Confrey's still in trouble on the backside trying to protect him a Titan and get him back. But meanwhile, oh, the Repi. front line, Repi gets forced away with the Eagles rally. Crunchy dives in, can't actually find a pick though. Maybe Kanye will be okay. Now he's going to pull him into that. But meanwhile, left hand side, Justice make the correct call and start sieging the Phoenix and get it. Beck says locked in place there and a nice Phoenix, like you said, coming out from Titan here. Almost all ultimates have been used. Petrify up. Searing pain is up. This is such a good game from Justice. The big key, though, is not to get a nosebleed in this situation. We have seen games like this lost before by teams that just make the small mistake at the worst time. Remember what we said about Titan, though? They have a healing composition. They could easily take a Phoenix back if they get a Deicide or potentially the game. It's 30 minutes in. Respawns are long.
and you can see you can see Justice. They're not. It's not that they're scared. It's that they're respecting the team comp coming out from Titan. They don't want to super dive. They don't want to hard dive onto a Phoenix with a team that has shells. Well, all ultimates they, are they down have as well. Right? They may they may not, not know the exact timers on them. They're likely to start coming up here in just a couple go. seconds. And X you can see up. already the people with cooldown. Yep. Fex says Q in. There's already up. Well, Gabin. Gabs and Giannis is coming for exactly the same time, so now they're going to go aggressive again. There's the blink calculus from Kewin. Crunchy's going straight on to Pretty Prime to take him out of this fight as much as possible. Good silence, though. The turn of attention for Kewin. Can they find the pick onto him? Well, Fex says does find Repicast as that goes on. And Comfrey brings down Crunchy, but MBK on the backside. He's been left alone to keep pushing. Yeah, and one more crit probably would have secured that kill. Instead, though, they're actually, are they looking for the win? I don't know if I like this. Pretty Prime, he's still Zephyr's there. No, on. they're looking for the win. The Titans are actually, it's already under half. Zephyr comes down. They're just going to go for the end. Can Isis defend? No, they cannot. Justice, take a game I, off Titan. That was actually, so they had the two Phoenixes there, and Titan was spending so much time trying to defend the only Phoenix remaining that the firemen just were just constantly at that edge. They never got any pressure in those lanes. So when the fight actually broke out, all of Titan rotated to that right-hand side. Fire minions poured in, and by the time that Titan started to lose the fight, it wasn't like a super clean one, but they were forced back, and that was just enough damage from all those fire creeps to allow Justice to walk in there Justice. and upset Titan in game one. I'm really surprised. Really surprised by them. Bring up first blood for us, please, and let's have a little look exactly at how this began because at the start, Titan. That was a right. early, great early pick. It was a great early pick right there, and, and that's the, the power of Sylvanas is not only do you have a dominant lane pressure, but especially early on before the opponent can get their movement ability, if you can root them and pull them into your own minion wave and your own hunter, they take so much damage. And that game between the two of them, Justice came out on top. And because of that, Fex says his credit with play with the game must have been pretty close in that Justice lineup. But he performed well from the start. I mean, big rotations. This is the one that really turned things right at the beginning of the game. We saw what their game plan was. The, the counter engage was huge. They wanted Titan to engage on them. That's they right. wanted Titan to dive. They wanted them to get greedy and look for the kills. And I don't sometimes think it was greedy, it was more frustration was that game plan. It's like when get, make them force them. I think when you're the higher seated team, you have this impending feeling that you have to be the aggressor. That's true. Especially against like a team like Justice who have been at the bottom seeds. But Justice, they always they always surprise us. Every split. Last time they had, were actually able to beat Trig and Fnatic early on. This time able to sneak a game away from Titan. The question is can they keep it rolling? They've never been able They're to take a clean to. set off someone. I mean, can they keep it rolling? You're right, they've never taken a complete set off someone. They did beat Dig. So they won one game against Dig. Yeah. They've won one against Titan now. But I doubt Titan will lay down and fall to the wayside that easily. I mean, that was a good game from Justice. Can they rinse repeat it? That was the question. I feel like we're going to see some mobility gods banned out. Anyone that could potentially counter engage, I think Titan's definitely going to be looking for. Oh, but we just see Titan fans. not go for the sustain composition this time around. Let's find out. We're into picks and bans.